travellers to France will be sent into quarantine when they return to the UK. 500,000 Britons uh, must self-isolate for two weeks after a rule change last night uh, made by the Transport Secretary, Grant Shapps, who joins us live. Morning. Good morning. Uh, what prompted this decision? Um, quite simply, uh, the latest data out yesterday evening from uh, France showing there being a, a massive 66% increase in their uh, positive uh, test rate, um, meaning it sort of breached the level at which our joint biosecurity centre say that is the, the limit at which uh, we, we can have before we introduce uh, quarantines. Are people right to rush back from France before 4am on Saturday? Well, it, it would depend on people's individual circumstances. I mean, first of all, uh, by the way, I think we, we, we believe there are about 160,000 holidaymakers in France uh, who might want to come back at this stage or rather are there and would want to come back over the next uh, couple of weeks at least. Um, people will make individual decisions. I mean, I know for myself because I was in Spain, actually, when I had to put Spain into quarantine, you don't always see these things coming with lots of notice, I'm afraid. And then I've ended up, I ended up having to quarantine for a fortnight, just how inconvenient it is. Um, having said that, the, the biggest priority has to be to protect our hard-won gains in getting the virus under control and not re-importing it as, as people return um, home. So it is a sort of you know public health issue that we simply can't turn our backs on. As you say, there's not a lot of time for people to, to make their decisions after these kind of decisions are made. There could be more time, though. You may have seen uh, a tweet this morning from David Gork, a former Conservative MP, former colleague of yours, saying this. Uh, presumably, the decision to take France off the green list was made uh, yesterday afternoon. Newspapers were told a few hours uh, before that. Um, but the announcement was held back until... 10 p.m., 11 p.m. continental mm. time as a favour to the newspapers. Holidaymakers no, no, could have no, been given more notice. No, no I can absolutely uh, assure Mr Gork, my former colleague, that that's simply not, that's not true. Uh, in fact, uh, the French data came out late afternoon, I think 5 p.m. Uh, that then had to be crunched by the Joint Biosecurity Centre in the UK. Uh, advice then had to go to ministers. Absolutely not the case. And we had to also agree it with the four countries in the United Kingdom, uh, which on this occasion have all moved um, together. So we move just absolutely as quickly as we can. And look, I mean, let, let, let's be honest. If you do it immediately, people will say, uh, and you implement it immediately, people will say, uh, you should have given us some time. If you don't do it immediately, people will say, if you have this information, then why are you sitting on it? So, but, but, new, uh, but it, newspapers it, were given, a f but newspapers were given a few hours advance notice. No. No, that's 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 it's simply untrue. And the reason I can tell you that for certain is that I was chairing the uh, ministerial meeting that made the decision, um, and the decision, the decision was not made. Uh, what about policing quarantine? Obviously, lots of people might not stay at home for fourteen days and and follow the rules. Um, what's the government doing to make sure that people definitely do? Yes, I mean it's really important that you know this is a collective effort in in in. Um, quarantine as there are in so many things like wearing face coverings and so many other sacrifices that we everyone's had to make to fight coronavirus and it's very important people sort of um, do that because otherwise we will end up in a situation where we ourselves are having to have more presumably regional localized lockdowns but nonetheless uh, if you ask people in you know Leicester or um, Manchester or Northwest, you, you, you know, it's not something that you want to be doing. And the only way we can protect ourselves from this is to all uh, make sure that if we are quarantining, for example, that I just done for two weeks, re returning early from uh, what was supposed to be my family holiday in, in Spain, mm. it's important that you do adhere to it. My wife, actually, who returned much more recently, they finished off the holiday, um, actually received a call from uh, from from the uh, from border force. Uh, people are being checked up on. It's very important that people do adhere to it. It's a criminal offence, which ends up as a you know uh, as a criminal record uh, for for not doing it. So there's the yeah. in, in any way it helps everybody else. So you know let's be sensible with this and keep the gains we've had through fighting this coronavirus. But do we know how many people haven't been following the quarantine advice? How many people you know have actually been fined for this? No, the police will gather that uh, data over a period of time and that tends to lag so it doesn't come out um, uh, immediately. Um, but as I say, we do know that every single person who returns to the UK must now fill in, doesn't matter actually whether you're coming from a quarantine country or non-quarantine, you must fill in a uh, passenger locator form 
um, so that you can be contacted uh, and uh, that you will that, that there are uh, these random checks and you know for the most part as we've seen with so many other things face coverings for example I just checked the, the figures this morning 89% adherence to uh, using face coverings and the, of the other 11% of course there are people who are exempt for medical reasons so we're seeing very high proportion of people uh, doing mu m many of the things required to fight coronavirus. And of course, we do just need to remind people all the time of why we're doing this, to protect each other and protect the country's health. Your heart does go out, I'm sure, to people whose holidays have been cut short. And you've mentioned your own. You, you've been in this position. It must have been quite embarrassing to be on the first day of your holiday in Spain and this news was announced. Well, here, here's the situation. I mean, I could see, as other people can, because this is publicly published information from... Um, places like the European uh, Centre for Disease Control. Uh, and you can see what's happening in any individual country. The measure we actually use are the number of cases per 100,000 uh, over um, seven days. So that's the measure we actually use. And you can see what's happening. And so I had an indication, for example, before I went to, to Spain, as many people will have had before they went to France, that there could be a problem. I didn't, you know, A, I would never have acted on um, it, sort of inside information as it was, so I, as it were. So uh, I, I needed to go anyway. And B, I couldn't change the outcome of that just because I was in Spain. So I had to make the decision when the Joint Biosecurity Centre said, uh, which happened to be on the Saturday that I arrived, that we have a uh, we have a, a breach of the uh, of the limit and we need to act. So I mean, it's just, uh, I absolutely do have sympathy for the for, because I've been there myself and because you know people have you know mm. probably worked hard and saved hard and managed to get away. Um, I think um, for a lot of people, people will have known that this summer. Uh, could well be tricky and we don't control this virus and even less so in other countries than of course, uh, of course not of course not but it must have been embarrassing for you because here you are on holiday in Spain a day later uh, this travel announcement quarantine in Spain is, is announced it must have been quite embarrassing I don't think I was at all embarrassed, but it just shows we're all in this together. It's not one rule for people who make the rules and a different rule for everybody else. We all have to adhere to it. Mm. And I came home, of course, I was upset to you know, not be able to be on my a family holiday but I, I went through exactly the same thing that you know thousands of people yeah. or decisions that people will be going through in France and Holland and, and, and elsewhere and I'm afraid it's just the reality of the situation that we're in and we still have to make the right decisions regardless of personal circumstances. Oh, you are obviously the, the transport secretary I want to ask you about the uh, ScotRail service uh, which was believed to have hit a landslide in, in Stonehaven and what happened there three people uh, died uh, I, I want to ask you about the, the preparedness of network rail for this kind of thing uh, there was a report from the office of rail and road uh, which highlighted that there was six times more flooding on Britain's rail network in 2019 to 2020 than the previous year, and that a spike in there was a spike in landslides, which they say demonstrated a vulnerability. They warned that network rail plans to deal with extreme weather events and the climate emergency were not keeping up with the frequency and severity of these events. Is that right? You know, first of all, I was there actually yesterday, Luke, and I flew over the um, uh, in a helicopter over the crash site and I have to say my heart just goes out to the friends and families of people who were injured and the three fatalities. I spoke to the people who first responders, the emergency services, uh, one PC who'd got there first to the scene uh, and was there on his own with a colleague for 20 minutes dealing uh, with this before other emergency services turned up um, and it looked like something out of a disaster uh, movie. So my, my thoughts very much with those involved. In the, in the context of, of, of the point about um, the Office of Rail and Road, um, who are answerable to me, and Network Rail, um, they had written in their, I think in their annual report to Network Rail, that the, the extremes of climate change are going to bring a whole load of new stresses to um, the, the system, uh, which is absolutely true. And I suppose there's nothing that we... We, we don't know as a society. Um, it, 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 it's actually also true that there hasn't been a derailment lead, leading to a fatality for 13 years. Um, I actually represent well in Hatfield. So I'm, I'm between Hatfield and Potter's Bar, which were the scene of two terrible rail, rail crashes. Um, and you know, it looked like those things were in the past. I think we absolutely have to be reassured that the system is safe. I've asked, ordered Network Rail to do 
uh, a immediate surveillance on the on the system which they're doing right now and then i've ordered a report from them with the interim on my desk for september 1st but, but, but is the, addressing exactly the questions that but, you've but just on asked. that point is the orr right in that network rails plans to deal with these kind of uh, extreme weather events has not been up to scratch well, I think the OR were pointing out actually that there's the six times more likely to have these um, extreme uh, events. Um, Network Rail does spend a vast amount of money, £46 billion in this current period, uh, uh, the most ever on upgrading a railway system, much of which, of course, is a, a Victorian um, system. I was looking at the cutting yesterday in Stonehaven where that accident uh, occurred, and it's built you know, in a different time. Uh, for, for, for a different world, literally, when it comes to climate. So I want the answers to that from this study, uh, from the from the report, which is now very quickly mm. being uh, produced rather than uh, yeah. preempting it. But I, I'm damn sure I'll get be getting the answers. Uh, and just finally, we've been hearing from lots of people upset about their A-levels yesterday. Are you concerned that the poorest have been hit hardest by these A-level result downgrades? I think it's really, I mean, first of all, congratulations to all the A-level students who um, you know, got their results yesterday, 97% of, of whom Well, were, not all of them. Uh, uh, well, well, 97, I was going to say 97% of the grades with the, the same as the centre assessment grade or within one grade. And uh, you know, congratulations, because a lot of students have worked very hard. What we do need to have is a system which um, is fair. We couldn't have grade inflation um, this year only based on um, the, the teachers rather than having any kind of moderation in the system. But one thing which I think is interesting to note is there's an increase uh, to 179,000 18 year olds who've had their places at university confirmed yesterday. So that's up 9,000 on last year. So it looks like the moderation and the rest of it has led to um, students getting their university places, which is very important. I have to have a vested interest because next week it's the GCSE results. I have twins in my house who are looking um, to the system and want to know that this triple lock process that we put in place to enable challenge if they have concerns uh, works as well. So you know, everyone wants the system to work well. But what do you think people who have missed out on their university place because they've been massively downgraded will make of hearing you congratulating everybody? Well, first of all, uh, the, if, if they feel that they have been massively downgraded, one, they will appeal. Two, uh, they can refer back to the uh, mocks for that uh, result to be used. And three, they can actually take the exam proper, which, of course, they've been denied by coronavirus, uh, and do that before university starts. So this triple lock process is designed to make sure um, that, that students don't uh, miss out. Um, but as, a, as, a, as I say, actually, I, I, I know, what, I know what, what you're saying here, but actually it's interesting to see 9,000 more students ending up with university places confirmed by the same time um, today than we had yesterday, which suggests actually the system uh, is adjusting. And let's face it, in impossible circumstances, no one uh, yeah. thought we'd be in this coronavirus situation and, and no one thought people wouldn't be able to take their exams. And that, that is imperfect in itself, of course. Transport Secretary Grant Shapps, thank you very much for your time this morning. You're very welcome.